Welcome to the Get Real Podcast, your high octane boost of full on reality therapy for personal, business, and investing success with your host, Ron Phillips, because somebody's got to tell it like it is. Hey, everybody, welcome back to the Get Real Podcast. Ron Phillips and Heather Marchant here. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> well, Happy we're Monday. both tired. And, uh-huh. you know, it's, I don't know why Heather's tired, but I'm tired because I traveled. I think Heather's tired because she talked to me most of the time while I was traveling. That had to be it, Heather. <laughs> that must be it. Yeah, my my kids are very creative kids. I don't think I've talked about that on the podcast before. And we hosted all weekend a a Halloween show that my son wrote and directed and wrote music for um had help from people orchestrating the music and stuff like that it was pretty it was it was only about 22 minutes but it was a lot of work so uh, where we're my house is recovering and we're recovering from hosting a bunch of people coming to watch his play that he wrote over the weekend yeah so plus we hosted our own um online event which also takes that's right uh energy to get that's right you've just been like you know no, a little too much. <laughs> a little Heather Marchant production and uh, <laughs> LLC or something. LLC. I'm sorry. Well, um, not that this needs to turn into the Ron on the Road show, but. It's looking it, that way. Just, yeah, it's going to be two weeks in a row Ron on the Road show because I literally just got back and there's a whole bunch of stuff that we thought we would mm-hmm. tell you from the trip. There's a lot. There's a lot of takeaways from that short. What was it? Four less than forty eight hours. Yeah. Yeah. It's. Uh, it was so fast. <laughs> yeah. It was so fast. Anyway, <laughs> I. This is the get real show, and so you know we're gonna get real. We have. Uh, not everything goes the way that it's supposed to go, and some of you out there listening, you're like, no crap, Ron. Yeah, that's about life. That. <laughs> But well, we can talk about, um, you know, the, the great part of real estate. And occasionally on the show, we talk about when things kind of turn to crap. So great. <laughs> yeah. Now, the reason that there's such of a gap in between the good and the crap is because there's so little crap. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. Yep. I think a lot of people listen and assume that. Um, things we touch turn to gold or something. I don't know. I know I have clients that must feel that way, but it's definitely not that way. So we have, we, we talked earlier, I guess it was earlier, like last week and, and you decided to book a trip and that on Arkansas to your trip to Memphis that I'm imagining was already in the works, a trip to Memphis. Yeah. 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 So yeah. we, I'll give a bit of a background because I, mm-hmm. I can't, I, I can't talk to as much of the uh, live stuff that you can, but we started building in on some land that we owned in Bella Vista, Arkansas. It is north of Bentonville, Fayetteville. Northwest Arkansas is expanding and growing like crazy. It's the home of Walmart, JB Hunt, Tyson Foods. I mean, it is, it is a big, booming area, right? All signs pointed to go. Just a little bit of the why behind this story. Um, When we first started the project, it looked like we could do an Airbnb and kill it. We ran all the numbers and did some research on it. Um, All of that looked great. And then we also saw that there was a room to rent it and have the numbers work as a rental. And then we also saw if we wanted to, we could exit and make a profit that we'd have equity. Um, we went to a bank and we we put the land up as collateral. We didn't even put up any cash, really. I mean, we paid for a survey and that was it. And so the project w- looked awesome. And we were we thought of doing more, but we started with just two because, Thank you know. God. You, uh, I know. <laughs> we're I mean, little-headed you people. Imagine <laughs> if we had started with more than that. I know. We thought about starting with five. Um, we thought about getting clients on board doing it with us. Um, to do the same type of thing. So when we started, this looked like a home run from every angle. I'll just well, preface it. That. To be to be clear, it 
uh, could have, should have been. True. Yeah. And uh, I'll just go on record right now because we're going to talk about the things that have gone wrong here in literally every sense. What has gone wrong is our fault. Yeah. hundred percent our fault. And the reason for that is because this was, um, this is like a side project. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing. It's not like Heather and I don't have enough to do. True. Right. And so we, we thought, well, you know, we can probably build this from out of state. As I say this, Heather, this sounds silly, but it's, <laughs> I'm just going to, but this is how we talk ourselves into ridiculous things. So I'm thinking, you know, this shouldn't be that big of a deal. We hire a, a builder. Mm -hmm. you now they're going to do all of the work. All we really need to do is get the loan. We even set the loan up to where it had to have inspections. You know, we put all the protections in place to protect ourselves. Yeah. And we had a referral for a builder. It wasn't like we yeah. were calling. Yeah. From somebody who I've been business with for a long time. Yeah. Right. So anyway. Um, and I did meet the guy. I did meet the builder. I, I, I'm just adding in some background too, Ron, because I think this is important to recognize all the steps we put in place to protect ourselves and due diligence that we did. Right. So yeah. I even was driving through that area and went up and met the builder face to face. Mm -hmm. So go ahead, Ron. Keep going. I'll, I'll just say, I say to my kids a lot, um, we usually really jokingly and I'll, I'll something we'll be talking about something and I'll just say, well, let that be a lesson to you. <laughs> yeah. So for everybody out there listening, uh, let this be a lesson to you. Um, I think there's two gigantic takeaways from our, but we should probably describe what has happened and then, you know, then I'll give you, and then I think we'll give you the takeaways. And yeah. as we describe this, just understand it's the reason that most people don't talk about their failures is because it's embarrassing. Yeah, true. We both do real estate. I've been doing real estate for like 20 years. Mm -hmm. Rehabbed a ton of houses, you know, done new construction projects. And it, I'd, I'd like to say that I know what I'm doing. But here's the big problem with, with this thing is that it was such a side deal that we didn't really think about it that often. Yeah. And then it was kind of like a pain in the butt to actually go fix it. So we kept thinking, wow, oh, I mean, it'll, if we just call, like, it'll fix itself, right? <laughs> True. It, that never, ever works. It never works. And yeah. the crazy thing is, Heather and I know that. Yeah. Like, we know that. Ah, which is so why this is so frustrating. It is frustrating because I think um, when when things started, so when we started the project, it took forever to get off the ground. And it was the updates I would get very infrequently and they would say, oh, permitting, permitting. Right. So we weren't out which, of really any money at this point. So which ahead. we had already had, if you recall, Heather, we had already had experienced in Florida, like yeah. year long delays. So, yep. you know, th we're like, OK. Yeah, you know, exactly. Whatever. So and it, then it did take like an almost a year, didn't it? Yeah, to really start moving the project took over like about a year. And then you add into it the COVID happened and supply chain problems. And so it was constantly, oh yeah, supply chain. And I one thing we've talked about before is yeah. I feel like builders can just drop supply chain problems and everyone has to say, Oh, okay. And I'm like, man, I wish I would ask more questions. You know what I mean? Like there, there probably was some legitimacy to the supply yes. chain issues because you know our really really good builders that we use they actually had some problems. The difference is they fix the problems because they know that if they don't fix the problems there's still like there's still soft costs that are clicking along. Yeah. It's true. Well the soft costs are on Heather and I. So now that's that's one of the takeaways is that mm -hmm. the soft costs were on us. So yeah. the builder, he he had quite a few of these projects going on. 
And, you know, we finally got down to it. He was having some, some issues, I think, because a lot of stuff hadn't closed and he was counting on some stuff closing. And it's like the quintessential builder problem. Mm -hmm. Yep. So then I would say then the next like couple warning signs were when we just, we had someone reach out to you. And that was probably a year ago that someone reached out to you and said, hey, your builder abandoned this project. Do you remember that, Ron? You got like some cold call. And that was probably our biggest wake up call is that they said, you got a problem and um, your trusses are just sitting out here. And we were like, wait, huh? (laughs) What, What do you mean? And so that's when we asked a bunch of questions and found problem number one. And he said, I have some cash flow problems. So we met, I looked at, I, I met with a couple of other builders just over the phone to see if we could move the project to another builder because we just saw all these warning signs that there was a problem. And I just couldn't get the numbers to pencil with our construction loan that we had and everything. It just wasn't going to work to move builders. And so... Well, guys, the, what, the other things that have happened here, right? Is it because there were supply chain issues? Well, that supply chain issues and COVID, I mean... All of the building expenses are now basically yeah. double yeah. what they were, and um, they and they had gone up anyway with our builder. So uh, it just it 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 was it was bad, and I think it was very shortly after that, Heather, and then he's like that. I I got some backing. I have yep. a, a financial partner. I have some backing, and we're like, oh, okay, cool. The financial partners were supposed to do all the books. Yep. So all of the financial problems were supposed to be taken care of because this, the, the guy who bought into the business brings all of this to the table. Mm-hmm. Yep. So then uh, probably maybe three or four months ago, we got another call that they had cash flow problems again and that we needed to pay for stuff up front and then get reimbursed from our own construction loan after it was installed to keep the project going. So we started doing that. And the the record keeping for that is a pain in the butt. (laughs) But but we we started doing that and moving forward with that plan. And that lasted maybe three or four months. And then we had decided that you were going to go out there. I'm trying to remember what prompted that. That, oh, yeah, yeah, that thing. That um, we heard that people were leaving the builder. We had a guy that we had a call with that went over the numbers and he knew what he was talking about. He was on our team and oh, we were man, pumped. We were so excited. We were like, oh my gosh, this is great. Cause you yeah. know, he he spoke business and and when he talked about financials, I was like, Yes, thank yeah, you. He yeah. understood. Yeah. He understood the problems. He was like, All right, we're gonna get these projects done for you. They're 30 days out. And that was probably 90 days ago. And so he stopped responding to us, to my emails. And I said, I haven't gotten an update in like two weeks. And um, then we heard from our, the friend that referred this builder, the realtor there, that he had, um, that people were just leaving. That people were quitting. No, we got, you recall, we got an email. That too, dude, yeah. Like hijacked the, um, the Bil- original builder guy's email because his was cut off, I guess. And emailed everybody mm-hmm. and said, hey, peace out. There's nobody from the finance part here anymore. You're back yep. to the original builder. <laughs> Heather and I are like, oh, come on, man. Yeah. Heather and I were just talking about this. Like, I don't even know how many days ago. It wasn't very many days ago. But I told Heather, I said, you know, have you noticed that whenever something is going bad, And you think, yeah, but, you know, I'm just going to hang on because if I hang on, you know, we can make this thing good, whatever the thing is. So relate it to however you want. This case, it's this builder thing. Uh, It could be related to business, could be related to hiring, could be related to, you know, to staff, to financial problems, to and how many rehabbers, Heather, have we known that it's just like, well, if I I just go get another house, then that'll solve my financial problems. You know. Yeah, no. that's true. Um, that's, it's, it's kind of like somebody described this um, recently to me as um, a, a husband and wife that are having marital problems and they're like, 
uh, let's just have a kid. Yeah. Let's have a kid. Yeah. It'll fix it. <laughs> That's and true. I, I'm That's here. really a good example. And the crazy thing is, I know this. Mm-hmm. This is not like a revelation to me. I already knew this. I just didn't want to deal with this stupid problem because it was a pain in the butt and it takes me away from other things that are that actually are making me money. And this over here is like a little side gig yeah. and it just is an irritant. So it's the little thing that's like just poking you, Go away. slap it away and you poke <laughs> it and you just slap it away. Instead of just solving the problem so the stupid thing stops poking you, you just like... You take the easy, that's what it is, is we took the easy way. Yeah. You should have fired that joker the first time that there was a sign of trouble. Yeah. And we did. There was always good reasons. And it, yeah, it, looking back, man. Hard. There always, though. <laughs> yes, that's what, I, that's what I'm saying. Oh. So, so we, um, so let's, let's update everyone. So you went out there because we got to the point where we were like, okay, we've got that's to do something. Number one, I'm shocked. That this, that this builder guy who has, you know, basically completely screwed this project up royally, he, he said that he would meet with me on Thursday. Mm-hmm. And um, so I flew out like crazy early because, again, I had two days and I'm going to two cities and doing a whole bunch of stuff. And I thought really on that day that I was firing that guy, hiring another builder. Um, so I had to interview builders. I mean, it was a big deal. So I woke up at three in the morning, took the first flight I could get to little old, you know, Bentonville, Arkansas. <laughs> the the biggest little town. I know I was gonna say it's not little, but yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Um, and then I met him at a little coffee shop. I sat down and I said, dude, can you just tell me really what the issue is here? Like what's really the problem? And he said, Ron, I'm bankrupt. And I'm just like, I'm just like, oh my gosh, you got to be kidding me. Um, so then I'm, I'm thinking, okay, I'm probably going to have to hire another builder. Mm-hmm. What I didn't realize that I should have realized is that when another builder is taking over a halfway done project, they have to, they, they want their normal markup, but then they add a ton of other markup because all of the subs who are taking over projects midstream, they are taking on the liability. So they increase theirs. So every single person in the mix has double or tripled their take. Yep. So now we're getting these gigantic bids to finish this project, like almost what it would cost to build the whole freaking thing. Yeah. So, which we, you know, which we don't want to do. So then, you know, the only other alternative, and this is so key too, in every instance where you take the easy way out, the easy way always turns into the hard way. Yeah, it's true. And so now, Heather and I are dealing with subs. We are the contractor. And we're lining up dumpsters and we're lining up trim guys and we're lining up. I mean, this is absurd. Yeah. It's so absurd. So something that was supposed to be a, hey, let's invest some money and we'll just let this thing go. And we had the opportunity to shut it down, took the easy way, just like always, it turns into the hard way. Mm-hmm. So now Heather and I don't have a little side project. We are now contractors. Great. So... Super fun. Yeah. Um, super fun. And um, and we have lots of experience in this, I'll add. Like, I mean, he said, get a dumpster at the property. And I'm like, why do you need a dumpster? He's like, well, we have construction materials that are sitting there. And I said, well, how long do you need it for? Like, I have no idea, right? If I had experience in this. So I'm asking all these questions. I'm ordering a dumpster. I got to call a dumpster place today and order it for a month. I'm just, it's, I, it's funny, like laughing and also like wanting to cry at the same time. Like, yeah, I'm walking through these houses and I'm like, so we have, we have one of them that is literally like 30 days from being done. And the other one is probably 60 to 90 days from being done. It's supposed to be roughed in. The roof is on, right? It's supposed to be roughed in. Yeah. 
But the roofer didn't put the boots on the top, right? And so since he didn't put the boots on the top, it's been raining in those particular little places and ruining the subfloor that was already installed. So now, because we're idiots, we get to replace some subfloor all because the roofer just didn't put, and it was super easy. It doesn't even yeah. cost very much money. Just, you know, put a couple boots, only two boots that need to be put on. That's brutal. Um, you, you did not tell me that, so that's great. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, <laughs> oh, there's that. I mean, it's not that big of a deal. It's just a pain, right? Yeah. Just, it, it shouldn't have happened. And yeah. so what are the lessons here? We've already given you some, but I'll give you another one. Stay in your freaking <laughs> lane. Yes, that's my biggest takeaway. And I think I should say that we have a lot of clients that own land in this area. And so we thought this would be perfect if we did a test Got all the kinks worked out of the process, and then we helped clients build on their land, which, <laughs> which still is probably a, is a, is probably a good idea. Yeah, I mean, the numbers look really good if you don't f up the construction. Yeah. So, I mean, in the pl- here's the other thing: like we deal with builders all the time. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've been doing that since 2005, but I'm not a builder. Yeah. So I, I shouldn't act like one, like I can just go build a couple of houses. Um, when we are, you know, partnering with a builder to build a community, we're partnering with people that we know can actually build the community. Yep. And they can do it on their own. Like they get the financing. Like they have the stones to be able to go run a multi-million dollar project. Well, that's not what Heather and I did on this one. So if we had done that, well, A, those kind of builders won't build two houses, right? True. So we're two, we're small potatoes. Deal. It's just a completely different deal. This is not what we do. And because it's not what we do, um, it lends itself to problems. Mm-hmm. And then the second thing that we learned is that when there's a problem, you got to deal with the problem. Yeah. I mean, that sounds really simple and everybody should know it. And everybody does know it. Everybody mm-hmm. knows that. But how many times in your lives uh, out there, who those of you who are listening, have you done this? And no, thought, kick the can down. Or- dang it. I should have just dealt with this earlier. Mm-hmm. When 100%. things are going wrong, it never gets better yeah. with time. Agreed. Never. I I think I think that ha- that's happened to me so many times in my life of like having flashbacks just thinking about it. But um, it's it's the the part that's so frustrating too is seeing how it, the deal started and every day that we kick the can down the curb, it's it's expensive. I mean, the interest because of oh the God, higher God. interest rates right now, it's very expensive. Well, like to kick we the can started down. this. We could have gotten construction to perm fine. We had construction to perm financing in the fours. Yeah. Now we're in the eights. And I mean, it just, it's, it's not that, it's not that we can't sell it. Um, but it is that we have to now do it in order to be able to make it so that it will work. That's the, that's the suckiest part of it is that yeah. we, we have to do the work. Yep. And now we have to sell it because the numbers don't work for anything other than that when they were so good before. Yeah, I. that's a good point, Ron, because the one thing we haven't talked about is I looked into short-term rental numbers because I was deciding if we were going to list it or not. So I was doing some of that lake work for us and found that the city now has some stipulations. They only have, I think it's 500 allowed in the development and you have to renew your permit like all the time. And I thought, man, that sounds like, oh, and they wouldn't let me get a permit till the property was finished. So I thought, forget it. Like, I don't want to put that up chance that we're going to have a short-term rental. And that's what's happening. I mean, the short-term rental thing has been real attractive for a long time, but with a lot of risk that uh, it could shut down overnight. And that's what this project had happen as well. So. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. So the other, um, the other really important thing that, um, and we were talking about this the other day. We talked a lot when I was on the road. I drove from uh, Bentonville to Memphis, which is mm-hmm. a five-hour drive. So I had five hours. I basically just talked on the phone to people. I had meetings for five hours. Um, after I had meetings for five hours. <laughs> um, and so one of the things that we discussed that I, for the life of me, I don't understand why people don't get, but there's a lot of people who don't get it. And that is the time value of money. A dollar next week is not worth the same as a dollar today. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm pausing a little bit for effect because I, there's some really smart people that I know who just cannot comprehend this. Salespeople, by the way, are notorious for not being able to comprehend this. They don't get that a sale is a sale is a sale. It's not, it's not the same timing. So, um, in our business, we sell pre-construction, we sell new construction and we sell re- rehabbed properties. And selling properties that are six months out is not the same as selling properties that are, you know, 30 days out that can close basically now. And I mean, we had a salesperson uh, a couple of years ago that didn't understand that and they kept selling whatever whatever was there, they just kept selling it. Right. Mm -hmm. And they loved new construction, but it was almost all pre-construction at the time. (laughs) And they had all this business on the books. And we, I I mean, I kept telling them, you have got to sell some properties that can close. Now you're going to starve to death. Yeah. You're not, you're not. And they're like, yeah, but it's fine. Cause it's, it's fine. Cause I'm look at all this money and I'm like, but none of that's going to come in. Until way down the road, if it comes in, because, you know, I mean, anything could happen to the market. Look at what happened last year. Right. True. And um, they didn't make it very long. And it and it and it never it didn't matter how many times I said it, it never stuck. Even when the money wasn't coming in, it didn't stick. Um, And business owners do this all the time. They just don't understand. Money now, money fast is better than money slow which is not the same as investments that are looked at at a long-term horizon. It's different. But when you're in a project like the one we were in, speed is your friend and, you know. Yeah, you got to write it every day, which is what I'm looking at now, like building into my calendar every day, making sure that the project's moving forward, whatever it is. Writing a person. Now we have... yes. 15 people that we have to talk to on a daily. Yes. Oh my gosh. What a Did the dumpster bear. get delivered? <laughs> oh yeah. Um, and now we get to learn all the construction order and everything else. What a. Yep. Uh, okay. So this is one of those opportunities for Heather and I to say, um, don't be like Heather and I yeah. um, in this particular scenario. We thought we would share a huge massive flutter yeah on our part um yeah. to show you that everybody does stuff like that now yeah. right before i went on my crazy long ridiculous vacation i bought six houses and so i went to memphis to check on those um and just try to figure out what it is i wanted to do with them because uh you know i could keep them and rent them i could sell them. I mean, they're really good deals. So I could sell them to, I could sell them on the retail market. I could sell them to our investors. I could sell them to, you know, I could do short-term rentals. I mean, Mm -hmm. I could do all kinds of things with these two. And after looking at all the numbers and after looking at our inventory, (laughs) I've decided that our our clients probably need them more than the retail market does. um, Just because there's a there's a limited amount of properties that can close before the end of the year. People need those for tax write-offs. Um, and so I, I think that's what I'm gonna do. So when I went there, I was I was looking at the, you know, punch list items that were supposed to be done and all that other good stuff. Cause they're brand new. Cause they're yeah, these are brand new. 
Um, and um, I got a good deal on them because I bought six. I like, bought the rest of what was in that community. Mm -hmm. And that's, I mean, Heather, I've been saying this now for months that this is what's happening in the market is that mm -hmm. good deals are being, because the builders are like, look, if I can move these off of my plate, then I can go get loans. I can keep my crews busy. I won't leave yes. my crews and I can keep making some money. I'm not mm -hmm. killing it like last year, but I can keep my business running. So they're giving like big discounts. And yeah. the smart builders are giving discounts in not in price. Because if you give, look, if, if you have a community that's going to have like a hundred homes and you're on home 30 mm -hmm. and you give a 10% discount to somebody, you've now set a comp yep. that makes it so you can't make any money. Like it means you, you're done building. You can't build anymore. So <clears throat> the smart builders are giving incentives. Lots of incentives. Keeping the prices. Yeah. Yeah. Lot. Yes. Lots of incentives. So, um, it's not as if we're not drinking our own Kool-Aid here. It's, I mean, this is, I'm looking for deals just like this all over the place, mm -hmm. trying to find them. And there's, um, not only are we doing that for all of you, but we're doing that for ourselves. So, um, anyway, I went there, took some videos of that. And then I looked at another project, which is so cool. It, it was such a cool, I don't even, I don't know if the numbers are going to work. Um, they're kind of really, it's a gated six homes in a gated little community about five minutes from the hospital complex. Oh, wow. Which would be awesome for, yeah. you know, not necessarily sure, traveling houses. These are like yeah. really nice houses, but executive level homes. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think the numbers will work, but I've, oh, I've got to, awesome. I've got to try to figure out how. Exactly. Um, but that's fun. That's the fun stuff, right? Going out there yeah. to make deals work and everything. And yep. then if they're in your lane, the cool thing is, Heather, if they're in your lane, they're easy. <laughs> they're easy. If they're not, <laughs> they might not be so easy. <laughs> Gosh dang it. This is so humbling talking about. But, you know, I think I, this morning when you brought you suggested talking about this stuff, Ron, you were like, well, we can really get real. I mean, that's. That's what we say we do here. So checking in and being real on where things are at. And sometimes you win, right? Memphis sounds like a win. And sometimes you don't win. And that's Arkansas for it's, sure. You know, we, we talk about baseball all the time. This is a perfect example of we struck out. Yeah. Sometimes you strike out. Yep. But if you concentrate on getting on base, ultimately you get to win the game because you'll, you'll have runs. Yeah. And yes, the... Memphis stuff is a run. Well, it's more like a base hit, but maybe a double. But it's definitely not a an inside the park home run like we've mm -hmm. talked about on the show. It's not one of those. But it's a it's a good deal. Yeah. And it's a it's a base hit, right? Yep. And a pretty easy one because there's so many different ways that I could exit that deal. And one of them particularly, I, you know, I've got a lot of control over, which is I know how to make this deal work for my investors. Because of that, I know I have a, I know I control the exit on this one. Mm -hmm. We can't say that about the ones in Arkansas. We don't control the process. We don't control the sure. exit. We don't control nothing. anything about that deal down there now. We nothing. nothing. We don't control the financing. We don't control nothing. Oh. We don't control anything. That's where you get in trouble. Yeah. So, I mean, not only that, but in Memphis, I have, um, you know, really good relationships with a whole bunch of different, like everybody that I would need. Mm -hmm. True. I, we don't have that. We didn't have that. That's in true. Arkansas. And so it's really, really important that take all the lessons, I guess, that Heather and I have just discussed with you guys and apply them to your business, apply them to your life, apply them to your marriage, apply them to your partnerships, just yeah. apply them. Yeah, things don't get better with time unless you make them better. Mm -hmm. Typically, they get worse. It's a good point.
I mean, just you can think about it in any in anything. Yeah. Marriage, kids, just doesn't make any difference. Things don't get better just because you leave them alone and think they're going to get better. It's not the way it works. So. Um, True. So those of you out there who have rental properties, I mean, we said this before. If something's wrong, jump all over it with your property manager, right? Get on it because it isn't going to get any better with you avoiding the phone calls or the emails or thinking that something somebody else is going to do it. Just jump in. Um, It's important. Agreed. All right. Um, The other really cool thing happened in between those two things is that I got a little... uh, that's not true. Heather got me a little uh, uh, Regis office oh, yeah. in Arkansas, and we did a webinar while I was on the road. I took all my gear, and um, it, it went really great. well. Yeah, yeah, it went really well. Uh, Would have never known that it was in the middle of a drive. I mean, I guess you hadn't started your long drive yet, but still, you know, moving from one place to another. Though. Man, I had gotten up at three in the morning. <laughs> That's true. And I've been traveling and having meetings all morning long. And then literally when I got done, I got on. Um, but this is a huge win. And this, this actually fits really well. Um, about a year ago, we brought our marketing in-house. Mm-hmm. And we paid somebody to teach the, the, the marketing team. head yeah. and help us build the marketing team. So that we could fix what was going on in the Saluki control it, right? So that we would know what we were doing. And this was the first one that Ashley has done all by herself. Like we, we finally said goodbye to the people who were training and she killed it. It's a lot of moving parts. I mean, you guys don't realize, um, you know, we put out ads, we send out emails, we have a landing page for signups. We have, um, reminders that go out. I mean, there's so many moving parts to just technology wise, you know, let alone writing all the content, but it's still a lot. So it was, we were super pumped, super excited. Yeah. That was our best show ratio, including when we were working with the other company. Yeah. So clearly they taught her well. She picked it up and implemented it. Um, and it's one more thing we control. Like, yeah. We now control that. Um, it feels yep. good that I know it feels good to her, but it also feels good as a company that we can that we control that now. Yeah, it's so that's a piece that we yeah. don't have to rely on somebody else to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I thought that fit pretty well into what we're talking about today. There's there's a win. I feel like we should end on a win because I hate, <laughs> I hate losing. I really hate hey, Memphis losing. was a win. <laughs> Memphis Memphis will will be a win, and it yeah. was a fun trip. I met a buddy there, but. But this was a real win. It took, mm-hmm. a, that's almost a year in the making. True. That's and, true. And that's not, like, not the only piece, right? The rest of our marketing was fixed and, you know, we've been doing really, really well with that. And so all, all of that kind of steers into this, hey, we've got one more thing now that we, we can actually control, mm-hmm. which is really, really cool. Agreed. And I don't know, going back to Arkansas, I'm not sure what in the world we could do down there have any control over that other than just call all the freaking subs which sucks yeah so bad it really does amen brother (laughs) anyway so this year 30 days for the one property that's what i'm telling myself (laughs) yes so this year uh, or this week when you when you get out there make something happen uh make sure it's in your wheelhouse make sure you're working with professionals Make sure you have some control and, you know, get out there and make it happen. Yeah, and, and pray for us as well. That'd be good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. This has been the Get Real Podcast. To subscribe and for more information, including a list of all episodes, go to GetRealEstateSuccess.com.